guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to share with you my top five favorite DIY projects in and around my home. Now this summer will mark 10 years since we moved into our home. This is our first home that we bought together. When I was in law school, I had purchased a small town home. So that was my first home that I had ever purchased. My husband has a condo and that was the first home that he has had ever purchased. We were newly married and we were trying to really create a home that was ours, really make it our own and something that we could, we could really treasure. And I think we're pretty much at that point now. And over the years, we've done numerous DIY projects and home improvement projects. But I wanted to share with you over, you know, this period of time, what my top five my favorite DIY projects are in hopes that it would inspire you to um, maybe tackle some DIY projects around your home or maybe if you're thinking about doing a project either yourself or if you want to hire a contractor to come in just some things that we've done um, that have been cost efficient but look really nice and have been practical as well. If you're new here I hope you'll stick around for this video and consider subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos each week. Let me know in the comments section, have you ever done a DIY project in your home? And if so, do you have a favorite? Also, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and consider sharing this video with a friend. Okay, let's jump right in with the first thing you see upon entering my house, and those are our built-in bookcases and fireplace surround. This is an old picture from when we first moved into our home in 2009. Just drywall and the original brick fireplace. Our home was built in 1960, so of course that was original. And here is what it looks like today in 2019. Now this is the first DIY project that we did in our home. I designed it, my husband built it. It was the first time he ever built built-in bookcases, although he did do a mantle in his condo. And we did a lot of things to save even more money, like this tile here was on sale, just glass tile from Home Depot. Now, as you can see, there is a line that goes through that mirror, and that is because there is something hidden inside, which you'll see in just a moment. The main function of this room is to be a formal living room, a parlor, and I didn't want people sitting around a television in my formal living room. So we came up with this sort of custom feature to have the television hidden behind the beveled mirror. And I really love it because I can be in my formal living room surrounded by all of my favorite things, and if I want to watch one of my favorite shows, I can. The other thing is that I wanted a formal mantle, especially for Christmas time, which is my favorite time of year. And I've enjoyed decorating my home, my formal living room, these built-in bookcases, and the fireplace around every Christmas season, and the other seasons as well. So I'd have to say that for our very first DIY project, I am still so happy with it. Now moving to our home's exterior, here is a quick shot of our home when we first moved in in the summer of 2009. And as you can see, it's your typical brick rambler, 1960s, very flat, rather boring, no style. And here it is today. Actually, this was this past fall, so 10 years later, and we have done quite a bit to change the exterior curb appeal of our home. And one of those are these faux window mullions or window grills. Now we have Anderson windows and if I were to have purchased mullions from Anderson it would have cost a couple thousand dollars. They're very very expensive but I was able to complete this project for fifty dollars by purchasing molding pieces from Home Depot. I think each long molding piece was three dollars and some odd change. I cut them to fit and if you look at your windows, most Anderson windows especially, have little markings where the grills would go. So it was very easy to do the measuring. And then I adhered them to the window using outdoor double-sided tape. Now here's a spot where I didn't do it perfectly. Um, so I'm trying to zoom in so you can see what the double-sided tape looks like if I pull it down. But in any case, this tape has been on here for four years. That means four winters, four summers with extreme temperatures, 
and these window grills, window mullions, have not come off. They're still perfectly straight, they look really good, and if you go to the exterior of our home, or if you look at our new addition, our family room addition with brand new Anderson windows with the grills that were that came with the windows, you cannot tell a difference unless you go very close to them, of course. But you can see that's the brand new window and you really can't see a difference. Now staying at the exterior of our home, next I'd like to show you our DIY board and batten shutters. Years ago, after my husband and I painted the exterior brick of our home, it was painted white, we painted it slate by Sherwin-Williams, we had taken off the existing shutters, which were these ugly, cheap vinyl shutters, and I definitely did not want to put them back on the home. I wanted a more custom look, a cottage feel, and so of course I wanted board and batten shutters. So my husband picked up these PVC covered pieces of wood from Home Depot, created these shutters, installed them, and what we also did was frame out the windows with PVC pieces as well. It made the windows stand out a little bit more because our house was very, very flat. Then I went online and searched the internet for affordable but real wrought iron hardware accessories for the bat board and batten and shutters. All of those elements put together give that custom look and add more texture, more depth, and more visual interest to the exterior of our home. And now moving back inside to my most popular YouTube DIY tutorial and that is my chalk painted dining room table. Now I'm going to link that video above and also in the description box below, but this is my favorite furniture restoration project, chalk paint. If you are unfamiliar with it, you have to know it is the easiest paint out there to use. It's not cheap, but a little bit goes a long way. For this project, I used not even a quarter of the can of blue paint and not even a quarter can of the white paint. In fact, I was able to paint all of my upper kitchen cabinets with the white paint and I still had paint left over. So chalk paint is a really cool product. If you wanna learn more, like I said, go ahead and check out my YouTube video about it. My husband found this table at Habitat for Humanities Restore for just $35. This table has withstood the test of time and we use it every single day. So let's head back outside as I show you our DIY pergola and privacy fence. When we first moved into our home 10 years ago, we had nothing out here except for a cement slab. And we knew that there was so much potential because we have a huge yard. So we decided to do a pergola. We wanted to have a covered space, but also one that would let light through since we have a heavily wooded backyard. My husband, to his credit, he put in so much hard work research, sweat equity, talked to our friends and neighbors who were builders and architects. He did the majority of the builds. I did the majority of the painting. I also did the majority of the planting since gardening is definitely my thing. But he did such wonderful work here and it's probably one of the most impressive things that he's ever built. I will say I did try to help and while I was helping, I ended up getting a concussion. I accidentally had a 4x8 dropped on my head, so I will say if you're going to tackle a larger DIY, please do invest in the proper safety equipment. Get a hard hat, wear gloves, do those things because though DIY is fun, it also can be dangerous if you're not careful. Now, hmm. if I had to pick my favorite out of these five, that's really hard to do because each one of them created such a huge impact in changing the look of our home and making it look more custom, nicer, more expensive. Um, probably the biggest change was changing the built-in bookcases, adding the built-in bookcases, the fireplace around the mantel, and the hidden television with the mirror. I love the tile. I still love the tile today. That tile was budget tile from Home Depot, glass tile not very expensive and I still love the way that it looks it's so pretty my second favorite has got to be the window mullions I mean that added such a change to our home and even from the outside the curb appeal as well so our home looks quite different than when we first moved in both on the inside and the outside we really have made it something that we've grown to treasure and it fits all of our needs we use every single space in our home. So those are my top five favorite DIY projects in and around my home.
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some inspiration for some projects that you might be considering around your home. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments box below. You know that I do try to answer each and every relevant question, and sometimes even the not relevant ones. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.